What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. The book is entitled Lessons from a Non-Custodial Father at Amazon, Kindle, and Create Space. Link will be in the description box below as usual. This one is entitled The Jason Whitlock Mentality. Now, recently, people have been talking about the Jason Whitlock situation. You know, first, when, when he became donkey of the day for trying to cape for uh, Christian Leahy, and once again, he does it again with saying what LeBron James doesn't really face racism. And this is not really a thing about LeBron James. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It, this is about it, it, the Jason Whitlock mentality. Because basically what he was saying was, you know, LeBron James and people like LeBron James don't really face racism because they got money. And you, because you got money, you're absolved. Of, of dealing with racism and you know people like that to me are disingenuous because money doesn't absolve you of racism in America and then and then for one when people do that they, they like to bring up celebrities LeBron James you know what about Oprah what about Michael Jordan what about what about Tiger Woods what about Bill Cosby what about what do what does a, a you tell a normal person that um, exceptions don't make the rule? So a person like with his mentality basically says, "I'm gonna pick out all of the exceptions I can think about, and that's gonna be the rule." Doesn't make sense. But because you're applying it to, to racism, and you're you're caping to be a house negro. And while you, I'm, I'm the black guy. I speak for all black people. Card doesn't it doesn't come off well. It, it even comes off to stu stupid to people who aren't black when they're listening to it. Like that doesn't really add up because people who are non-black know and benefit off of racism. Okay, they know exactly what they've been doing, what they're gonna do, how it's been going. It, they they know that the 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 benefits of it. And they know they're doing sucker stuff all the time. So to, to defend them and their debauchery is just completely asinine. But let's keep going forward. The other thing is this. People with that mentality like to demonize everything black people do, even if black people are, are, are attacked. But at the same time, for some odd reason, put an angelic spin on everybody who's non-black. They're just God's gift to the world, no matter how much negativity they may do. And this is what I mean by this. When he was talking about LeBron James, you know, ain't nothing happened. He rich. You got a million dollar house. He didn't even see it. Who does who, you know, that's not even a real thing. He's trying to play the victim. Okay. Here's the problem. If the man owns a 20... I don't even want to bring up how much this house costs. I just thought about that. I don't pocket watch people of other races. I'm not pocket watching LeBron. My bad. Um, if you buy a house in a rich neighborhood and your house gets vandalized, nine times out of ten, the person who vandalized your house is rich too or in a rich family. So let's get it. Let's get it squared. Like. These were other rich people or their children or grandchildren who decided to get up in the morning and do this or get up in the afternoon and do this. In a neighborhood where, you know, the other neighbors probably saw this because you don't just do this in a five minute span, you know. So, well, you could do it in a five minute span, but, you know, it's just so blatant that people know it's you. But, the person that does it, you're not saying they're a jerk or, or they need to be found and prosecuted. They need to go to jail. You just People like that just skip over the attackers or the perpetrators of, of these events. Like their, their um, criminal behavior should be excused. And what you should worry about is a person who, who got um, offended being offended, which is ridiculous also. Now, to say that, you know, because you're rich, you don't 
you don't deal with racism the same as poor people. Here's the other pro- here's the problem with that mentality. Nine times out of ten, when a person says, "Well, you know, if you're poor, if you're a disabled vet, you're going to get treated a certain way." No matter what group you put in, whatever anomaly you trying to shift the discussion to there's going to be some black people in that group who get treated worse than everybody else that's problem number one with that ridiculous mentality problem number two is all of the, the factors you're going to state that, that, that gets people screwed over are pretty much factors that stem from experiences of black people in those situations it's not it, it's not as if um, everybody has a slight case of affluenza over us in all these situations and when you go to the what's the worst of the worst of the worst experience normally guess what you're gonna find who gets who falls through the cracks or gets done totally wrong or the system just completely ignores their humanity you're gonna find somebody black in, in that position you know uh, who, who's gonna ha- be served injustice on a regular basis you're gonna find black people there so then to interject everybody else into this situation to make an argument or a case that something that real that happened didn't really happen because you want to in your own way hate and cape for white supremacy is stupid also um you, you go back in history you do you know a lot of people that were lynched were business owners their money actually is the reason they got them killed their success is what got them killed you know People who stand up against oppression got killed. These were not just just people who are just going through day to day life. The, the the more you stand up for yourself in this country, the more you the more drama you get. The more you try to make an advancement in this country, the more drama comes your way. And a person like Jason Whitlock knows this. He he's yeah he's he's he he's black. He know he has a black family. He has black history. His family has its own black history that, that's probably played into this. And this is what. A lot of people with this mentality don't want to say. A lot of people are caping for white supremacy because it pays, because they know what it's like to actually be on the other side of that coin. They would rather get paid by the Ku Klux Klan and live comfortably than be middle class or poor with their integrity. And then tell you that, you know, Oh, because I drive a nice car. See, we've moved up in the world. No, no. You sold yourself out to move up in the world. So don't 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 act like because you live in a deluxe apartment in the sky because you sold yourself out using our people as as the shield or our color as the shield that for some odd reason we're in the same situation because there are plenty that there there are mathematically tons more people who who would live poorer than you and keep their soul than sell their soul and and live comfortably now the other thing about that mentality that that's, that's also bothersome is the 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 idea because his mentality to me is worse than Stephen A Smith see Stephen A Smith will bark on black people, but then he'll kind of whisper to white people, but he will address them. Jason Whitlock will only will bark at black people and never mention anything that white people do. You know, he has nothing to say about these things. So, you know, to me, those people with that mentality are just like uh, gang members who you call, who commit black-on-black crime, because the crime is... You know, you're in agreement with, with, with everything done to us that is evil. And but at the same token, you don't you'll disagree if we respond in kind. You see, and what I mean by that is this if LeBron James kids went to somebody else's house in that neighborhood and um wrote a racial slur slur or a slur to whatever they are as far as race, religion, or gender, or whatever, right? And they, they, they spray painted on their house. He wouldn't say, he wouldn't ignore LeBron James' kids doing that in the neighborhood and say the person that 
house was vandalized, they need to stop playing the victim because they got money. No, he would demonize his kids and then demonize the black community and say, this is how these kids are bad. So at the same time, he would be a complete hypocrite. The same thing he'll say is cool to do to the black family. If the black family did it to a non-black family, then all of a sudden the rules would completely switch. This is why I don't like people with their mentality because they want us to constantly get um, the, the, the worst side of the stick. That's a problem. And ironically, the one thing I can say about these people, they are so into in that bubble of it that eventually they're going to get rid of a person like him. He's going to get fired. But the one thing he can't, he won't be able to say is he's going to get fired for all of the racially charged things he talked about, but, but then he won't be able to say, well, I got fired because of racism. Because truthfully told, he was being um, a sellout to his own people. <laughs> he wasn't like standing up. They're going to be like, look, man, you, we losing viewers, we losing sponsors, and these, pe these black athletes that we want on our shows are not coming because of you. So you got to go. Because your people don't like how you treat them, so you got to go. So then he can't claim, well, you know, they're being racist against me. No, you just put your foot in your mouth. But technically, in a sense, they are being racist against you. But this happens all the time. This is why when this happens, with people that, that with that mentality, you know, the same thing is going to happen to Sheriff Clark in upcoming years whenever, when this administration starts going, I guess, downhill and, and all the stuff that he said. The same thing, because people like him happened before, you know, um, I think, you know, like Richard Steele got it during the um, his RNC uh, chair. I forgot when he, led the, when he led the Republican Party. I think he was the chairman or something like that. But it happens all the time. So you'll see it. It's coming. That's all I'm, I'm saying about this. I'm out.